Hey, hey, it looks like we are live. Welcome to Life with Brock. It's been a long time since I've gone live. I got some packages to open, some figures to talk about, uh, like the Walmart exclusive Captain America that everybody's going uh, crazy over. At least that's what I've been told. I'm also going to be talking about a future live episode, a collaboration with the other guys. And uh, I'll get to that once we start happening, having some people up in here in the chat. And it looks like we are getting some people here in the chat. Let me move this over so it'll be easier for me to see who's on here and I can talk directly to you. What's up, Mr. Vesper? And we also have Marvel Nation Studio. What is going on? This is an impromptu. It says we have 10 people up in here. I, I don't see them. I don't see everybody in here. What's up, T-Man? My camera is clear or my or my skin is clear. This is the HD 10. It's yeah, it's uh, it it's broadcasting in 1080p right now, I believe. Logitech, the C90 or something like that. What's up, Ace? Ace is up in here. Draw Customs. What's up, Justin? Mahalo. Lee Aller, what is up, dude? That's Leech Customs right there. We got Mark I Lab Creations. We have Draw Customs in here. What other customizers are we going to hop in here that I recognize names? So I was on vacation with uh, my wife for the last couple of days. I had, I had some training in San Diego for work. And then we, we made it a vacation the last couple of days. And we stayed at a, one of our favorite spots in Dana Point. And I have all these packages that I want to open. I have several packages here that I received from purchases and trade. And I figure, hey, let's hang out with some nerds. And I did get one from, where is it? Where is it? Jesus. Jesus. Hey, really sorry about what's going on. My U USPS uh, postal service here is uh, a bit, a bit difficult. I had packaged up, but we did a trade for some legs. I may end up having to send back his stuff and then remunerating him on, on his postage because I initially put up his package on Monday, set it up, ready to go. Uh, I didn't find out that it was picked up because I wasn't here, obviously. But he contacts me, hey, what's going on? Uh, there's nothing updating on the USPS tracking. And sure enough, one of my children uh, – as I was getting all these packages, realized, oh, shoot, the package came back in. She didn't know. So she sent it back out because our mailman didn't pick it up. And now, now I'm being held. Uh, it, it went out on Thursday, and it's still not uh, picking up on tracking uh, where we sent out another package, and that one's almost delivered. But anyways, I digress. Let me see. Marvel... Mations, Marvel Mation Studio is up in here. Daryl Taylor, what's going on? Let's open up a package here. I'm hoping, oh, what's happening? There we go. I lost you there for a second. I'm hoping I'm going to get some parts in for this guy. I should be getting some parts in to finish this guy. And I should be getting more of this guy because can you get the Sasquatch because I will be, I am doing a Manate custom. And I'm actually still looking for the head uh, because I'm gonna. I bought some from Jesse Quintero, those uh, man ape heads, uh, big head studios, I should say. And I'm gonna have to do something with that neck because he he obviously when you cast you don't cast. It's very difficult to to manufacture that uh, neck hinge. So I'm gonna be using the neck hinge from most likely a Sasquatch or I may be actually using Rhino. The Rhino uh, Build-A-Figure uh, head, I had Ace Custom Outlaws. Uh, he had the figure, so he says the neck does fit in the Sasquatch body, so I may end up using that one. So let's get to opening some of these figures. We'll start with Jesus's package here first. This may have to go. I, I probably shouldn't have opened this, and I should have, in case mine was lost, used Return to Sender. But, oh, well. So from him... I got the some of the build a figure parts, the arms and one of the legs for absorbing man to to finish this custom. 
What's up, Gammer? La Giao. Mr. Vesper, what is going on? So, uh, Mr. Vesper, what did you use, just out of curiosity, what did you use your Sasquatch for? Q's Crusader, what is going on? So that's one of the packages. I'll leave this here. Be sad. Be sad to send these back because then I'll have to find them again. But that's what happens with USPS sometimes. This package is from Brian Velasquez. I think we did a trade. I don't remember what it was for. Or maybe I bought some parts from you. By the way, I just did something. I cut towards me. Cut away. Cut away. If you're looking at the shirt and you're wondering where it's from, this is the Figa Game shirt from Do Dog Reviews. As a matter of fact, in a, in a week or so, we're going to be getting together on his channel, if it goes as planned, along with T-Man978, who was in the chat a second ago, Plastic Addict, who's also in Hawaii, Nate Simmons and Tech Chucker, and we're going to be discussing the five, the top five figures of for the year so far, thus far that's been released. Just know that I'll be representing the Marvel Legends community on that one. Uh, I I don't know which five figures I'm going to pick. Okay, here we go. So here I have the I'm I'm almost I'm almost good to go here. So I got the I got the legs. Now, and I got the arms, you know, sure, Sasquatch. Should I put them together here? Why not? Now, I can't remember if we traded or not, or if I bought these from him. I feel like I would have traded. And I'm, I am planning on repainting this guy, so he's going to be coming apart. So I have everything I need for him except for the head I need the head now actually I need two more of the heads for the customs but anyway so I had this guy built already I can't remember which was the uh, which customizer did the repaint on them I featured it on one of the this week in customs programs And I mean, the, the details on this figure, you guys, most of you have this figure already. It's, it's pretty well done. Some people complained that it was a little bit on the short side, but once I saw, oh gosh, who, who did the repaint? Oh, there's a, I'm sorry. I'm missing everything in the chat. I'm having, I'm, I'm, I was monologuing. I, I apologize. I am talking to you. I'm going to have to go back through here. And and look at these. I, I don't know why I'm on a rush. I always feel like I have to fill in the dead air with something to say. Does anybody remember who it was that I featured? Those of you that have been watching this week in customs that did. Uh, it was a phenomenal looking repaint. And a matter of fact, I may have used it. I feel like I used it for. Let me see if I can bring it up here. On this other side. I'll, I'll get to the comments in a second. Let's see. I feel like I used it on the thumbnail or I had, I may have switched it up. Let me bring, see if I can bring it up. It's been a while since I've messed around going live and stuff like that. So please bear with me. I feel like I, I'm, oh, here we go. No, no, that's not it. There it is. It was episode number eight of This Week in Customs. Let me see if I can play it and find out who did it. It was Charles Chop Shop. Awesome. It opened right to it. About the uh, 39 second mark, if you guys wanted to check it out, but Charles Chop Shop did an amazing repaint of this figure, and then that's what triggered me. I'm going, ah, I need to do it too. Really nice looking work. 
a really nice paint job. And I think he went with more brown tone. And this is very orangey. And uh, I just like his better. His looks more real. And I think as I customize even the comic figures, I tend to go towards the more realistic looking comic figures, if that's a thing. All right. Let's see who we got here. I'm going to go through the, uh, the chat. What's up, Jay? Yeah, Jay, make sure you hashtag this week in customs on, on your, uh, your Instagram photos. By the way, those of you that have been following that along and your customizers and you want to be featured on the show, hashtag your photographs. I don't want to get, uh, I think we've gotten to the, to the point now where I can just go strictly off of that hashtag. There will be times that I will go uh, to the other hashtags like uh, custom action figures, Marvel Legends customs, custom Marvel Legends, some of the bigger ones to find newer customizers. And I will definitely feature them. I, I try to contact new customizers and let them know about the show. But uh, there's so many that are submitted every week that I, I think I could do a show just strictly from that hashtag. And that's what I was hoping to eventually move toward. I didn't think it was going to happen this quickly. But a lot of you have uh, have really are enjoying the show and supporting the show and are supporting that hashtag. So I think that's what will going forward for the last few shows. That's what I've been doing primarily. I will find new customizers here and there. But if you're you've been featured before on the show and you want to get on the show again, uh, I support you. Uh, so you can support me back by using that hashtag. And that way I can just generate the show from that hashtag it makes things a lot easier for me. Uh, during the week. I'm still going to be looking at a ton of customs. That's super fun for me. Uh, so there you have it. Make sure you hashtag that uh, this week in customs on your pictures and videos on Instagram. Let me see. Yeah, T-Man978, he, he did say that it's going to be on this year's purchases. Uh, we haven't discussed what our parameters are because there are some figures uh, that I know that I got at the very beginning of the year that may have been released just at the end of last year, but I didn't include on my last year's list. So, but once we discuss it, we, we should probably discuss it uh, sooner rather than later. That way we can plan. I like doing things in advance that way. Uh, I'm not, I don't feel rushed doing it. So I'm sure we'll be discussing that. All right. So dead green custom. What's up, dude? No, Ace Custom Outlaws or Ace Outlaw Customs, Ace Outlaw Custom. I think I've been saying Ace Outlaw Custom or Custom Outlaws. Oh, well. Words are difficult sometimes, but my, my favorite is not Leonardo. I No. I think that's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. I, I should get some points for knowing that. All right, so the Captain America, I have one here. And I had picked two others up for uh, Doodog, but he ended up uh, finding them. So one of them is already gone. If you're interested in this figure, send me, and maybe we can work out a trade for a figure that I need. Uh, if, if not, this is going to go back to Walmart. I think these are uh, most likely going to be readily be, uh, available. But some people uh, do not pay the scalper prices on eBay ridiculous forty dollars for this no no player get it for your 23 bucks after taxes uh if you're if you're having somebody ship it to you out of box it'd probably be like 25 bucks shipped or if you're wanting it in here then it'll probably cost a little bit more because the uh the prices have gone up but uh, i'm looking to trade it if we don't find a trade then you're gonna have to go find it uh on on your own <laughs> it, It'll be in your local Walmart. It'll probably go on uh, sale. All right, let me see. Oh, yeah, thank you for trying to help me, guys. I'm, I'm way late on the cut. Let me see if I can come down. I have featured three Sasquatch repaints. Really? One of them it was a custom head. I don't remember the, the third one, though. What's up, Bargain Bin Customs? Let me see. Prime Artist says, getting ready to start customizing myself. I got a few ideas already. Just need a couple more things. Seeing your videos, amongst others, inspired to actually start. Fantastic, man. That's good to hear. 
What's up, Matt? We were just talking about uh, the top five. If you're still in the chat, we really need to uh, figure out the parameters for that show. It should be Doodog since uh, he's running out on his channel. Come on, James. I'm wearing your shirt here. Let's go. A little bit more organization. I know that you're going to be preaching all that week, but plan ahead, player. You got to plan ahead before you go on your trip. I think you were leaving tomorrow. So are you are you wanting this, Ace? What's up, Sean? You haven't missed much. I've been uh, just chatting. Let's open one of these other boxes. I already opened this one. Hopefully, I don't have to mail that back to Jesus. This one's going to be – I think I may have bought this. I don't recognize the name. And I've been pretty good with my Brokonomics so far this year. Oh, here we go. Foot – Fantastically foo. Hello. Why was my custom not featured? Which one was your custom? And I'll and I'll tell you why. Oh, this this was actually a trade. But it came in a female's name, and I don't recognize the female's name. Who did I trade this for? Let me, let's find out. I end up getting a Wonder Man that I think I'm gonna use parts of him for a Magneto custom eventually. A player. Where he didn't send me his effects. Player. Hold on a second. Let me see who said who was supposed to send me this Wonder Man. I have this um, this app that that you guys should should get. It's called My Stuff Two Pro. I keep track of every, all my nerd stuff in here. It's very, very uh, easy to categorize. Let me see who shipped me the Wonder Man. Mm, Mr. William Henson. I'm gonna have to contact you. Where are my where are my effects, player? The effects that come with Wonder Man. I s pretty sure. Wasn't there another hand that came with Wonder Man too? Oh, we're gonna have a chat. I'm sure it's fine. He probably just forgot. All right, let's get back to Footastically. Uh, he has an – oh, Wolverine with a sword? When did you uh, – oh, first of all, it, it, those of you that are that are newer to the um, This Week in Customs, I do look at literally hundreds of customs, and not all of them will make it on the show. I primarily focus – on entering the customs, finished customs from the from super 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 calib ex, super special way high level customizers like uh, like a leech customs like a Justin Marcos uh, guys that have been doing it for a long time and then there's like really really got like guys that are, are selling the figures right and then I'll go to higher level customizers who who are not necessarily sometimes they take commissions something that we can all learn from and then lower tiered folk like mid-level I, I i would consider myself like a mid-level amateur i don't really sell my customs i have a little bit of a clue a little bit to offer and then i'll include some of folks that are just starting out but that have obviously put in a, a lot of effort and then i'll put in work in progress shots uh repaints like this past episode i did a couple repaints from master customizers uh like action figure toronto uh craig work i featured him so uh to keep it very interesting for people right so if you're just learning uh, I, I i am including things at the end for people that are submitting but i can't even include every everything uh some things that, that will catch my eye so all I have to say is like keep keep working uh, on your customs. I'm not sure why that Wolverine. Uh, I'd have to look into it if you hashtagged it. But when did you send that? Uh, when did you send that uh, in? Because I usually will do. I'll start doing the show on Fridays, and depending on Fridays, uh, when I start, if you submit it on Friday, I I won't get to it. Matter of fact, there was a customs that were submitted after I did it that I just I. 
I'm, I couldn't include on this week's episode. And I have missed a ton, even though they're hashtags sometimes for whatever reason, I don't see them come across my feed. And then what I'll do is on that Friday, I'll go to that hashtag and then I'll start looking through everything that was submitted in that week period uh, prior to the, you know, from the last episode to up until that Friday uh, when I start doing it. And then I'll just start picking them and I'll, I've been including them towards the end of submissions that I just wasn't able to get. And some of them are incredible. The levels vary. Right. Some of them are incredible. Some of them need a lot of work. Some you can you can tell they're new customizers. And like I said, I'm just trying to showcase uh, the work. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. That's not my goal. My goal is just to really showcase custom in the custom world and bring attention to these artists, especially the ones that are taking commissions. Because one of the things that I realized early on, especially when you're working on a Marvel legend, that's a twenty dollar figure. And people have that in their their mind and they don't really understand why the pricing is what what it is so what i've tried to do on my channel as i worked on customs and i realized it takes a lot of effort and time and skill and to get the skill you have to have a lot of experience right so i've been doing it for about four four and a half years and my level is not even close to certain guys that are doing it on a daily basis like guys that pump out customs like captain snick pumps out customs like this because he actually does sell them on a regular basis and i know the effort that it takes to to put in here and i know and i'm a realist i can look at my custom and i can look at somebody else's custom and i can say well man there's his their skill level is way higher painting skill even the ability to put things together and make it smooth the sculpting and I'm just trying to bring awareness to the community. So when people do go and buy a custom, I've never bought a custom, by the way, except for custom parts. Never bought a full custom because guess what? I didn't want to pay $350, $400 for a Marvel Legend custom. I didn't want to do it. Some people do. And I think that the price is justified based on the skill level of the customizer. And so that's what I've tried to do, bring awareness. Uh, I think somebody, a board dad told me that uh, after I featured, I think it was his Punisher. It was an amazing Punisher Hulkbuster. He gained a thousand followers on his Instagram, which was it's fantastic, and that's what um, um, I'm desiring to do. So all that to say is, don't be disappointed if you don't make it initially when you're starting out on customs. I really don't know what that. I'm speaking directly to um, uh, to the customizer here. Who said that his Wolverine wasn't featured. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feeling, but if you're newer to the game and your custom is rough, it may not be featured. Uh, it'll be featured maybe towards the end. Uh, and you know what I would love to see? I would love to see, and maybe your Wolverine's awesome, and I'm just, you know, uh, I don't know. And maybe you're a better customizer than me. I don't know that. Uh, it may have just been a timing issue. So I hope you're getting what I'm saying. Uh, the the show for it to gain popularity really needs to feature high quality customs uh, or else the other people that will be featured won't won't benefit because the the newer customizer that gets their custom even featured at the very end if it gets seen for example let's say we have you know 6000 views on the episode the 6000 views or however many views we're getting is really generated by the incredible artists right the higher level and i'm not including myself in that boat no don't, don't, don't I, don't, I don't find myself out that, that i'm an incredible artist if, if, if the show was just about my customs my customs don't get as many views as this week in customs episode so it's really generated by those top level people and i really want to feature them and then some of the people up and coming folks that i that i do feature because ultimately it gets everybody's work seen by more people so I hope that that explains it. Uh, I may have said too much <laughs> or I was too real, but that's that's the reality of it. Hot Cheeto Fingers, what is going on? All right, let me catch up on the comments after I, another long monologue there. Roundhead Collector, what is up? Dude Dog it says he ain't holy. Hmm. Do we need to get into a theological discussion here? If you're a Christian, you're you're described in the Bible as a holy one, set apart. So, 
Hmm. I know what you mean, dude. Dog. You're not walking on water, but and you do serve the Holy One. But Christians are referred to as saints, and that's the word. All right. Ooh, forgot. This is not a Bible study. Auto man who takes commission for painting heads. Go look at uh, the the customizers that I feature. At the, uh, usually at the very beginning of the show, most of those guys. I know uh, Leech Customs who was in here. Mark I Lab Creations that was in here takes custom. Um, I'm not sure if they paint heads though. You're gonna have to settle that with him, them. Ace Outlaw Customs has done uh, some in the past, but I don't think he's taking. Bargain Bin Customs. I'm not sure if you take. I know Hot Cheeto Fingers has done some. Uh, take some uh, commissions. I'm trying to see who else is in the chat. Let me see, Mr. Vesper. Cool. Oh man, I'm missing. I, I'm sorry, I'm I'm missing. Yeah, Justin Marcos. He mentions uh, that. That by the way, that's Mark I Lab Creations. Uh, Bordet is one of his favorites. He is one of my favorites too. Not only is he a good customizer, but that dude also takes phenomenal photographs. Here's another thing. I know I'm, I'm springboarding this week in customs, and I still got packages to open. Also, uh, customs that I like to feature are, are, are going to be appealing to the eye. Some of them are good customs, but the photographs, the lighting is, is not good or the video quality is not good. And it's difficult for me to put those in, in the main body of the This Week in Customs because it's just not going to be visually appealing. So Bordag Customs, he's a perfect example of someone who not only does really good custom work, but he also takes high level of pictures. And you got to understand hundreds of customs that I look up uh, literally in every week, not only in this week in customs, but then there's all these other hashtags that I that I follow uh, to see if there's any new customizers out there that I'm missing. So, uh, and I, I really look for the ones that are visually appealing too. Some of them are good customs, but they just, their, their work is not really showcased well uh, because of the photograph to take. For example, the lighting right here is not very good. I have one light, but look at, I just look at, look at the difference that it makes in showcasing this work of art right here. Just by putting one light on one side, it already helps brighten up the picture. So if you want to take, if you want to at least showcase your work better, uh, showcase it with a light. Also, sometimes the way that the, the photograph is taken, sometimes the figure would be like this, like this on the side, and we can't really appreciate all the stuff that's gone into the custom. So this week in customs is a showcase type of episode. So make sure that if you're at least trying to get your, your picture noted. And I'm not perfect, guys. I may pick the wrong ones or whatever. I, it, it's just it's all subjective, too. But take a quality picture where it's, your, your, your custom is going to be lit up so that we can all appreciate your work. Also, uh, I am, I'm a nerd when it comes to Marvel Legends, uh, Marvel figures, as you say, and DC figures, I'll recognize the character. I'll even recognize the, some of the parts that are being used. And you already know that I'm not the best at that. If you put up a picture of a, a Dragon Ball Z character, I know Hot Cheeto Fingers uh, does custom uh, of those figures and some other customizers too, or Mighty Morphin Power Rangers or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Put a little description of what you've done or maybe the base body that you used, especially if it's a Marvel Legends or DC collectibles uh, figure. That way I know what's customized because it, some, some of them are like, here you go, custom figure. And that's all it says. And it has the hashtag this week in custom, which I appreciate. But I'm not going to know what the heck you did. Sometimes I'll be able to tell with the paint or sculpting. But a lot of the times I can't, and if and if I can't intelligently speak on it just a little bit, I, I'm probably not going to feature it because I'm just going to go, oh, check it out, and then have <laughs> it not be a custom figure that you somehow use the hashtag because I've, I've seen that happen before. Uh, they'll just put up a, like a Marvel Legend and not or or a Black Series figure. I recognize Star Wars uh, customs too. I will recognize some of the bodies, and I just can't tell what the custom work 
then I, I won't feature it because, like I said, I can't intelligently speak on it. I hope that helps some of you that are watching this now or maybe watch it in the future of how I go through. There is a method to my madness. Initially, when I started doing the This Week in Customs, I just wanted to put customs out there. And I was like, oh, that looks good. That looks good. That looks good. And I didn't really have a format. The The more I've done the episodes, I, it, the format has kind of uh, created itself. And I usually will start with finish customs. Then I'll move to repaints. Then I'll move to uh, a work in progress shots that look interesting and clever, like magnet work or sculpting. You can see where the I, I can foresee where that custom is going in a few weeks, and then I can showcase it and say, "Hey, check it out! Look how where this custom went." And then you know some custom pro, uh, products. I featured some folks uh, like Harker Customs. I featured um, uh, Can of Beams and other creators like that that will have stuff that we can use for for our custom figures. And that's the format. And then at the end is just other customs that I just couldn't get to. I couldn't put in the show for whatever reason. And I'm featuring it at the end. That way I can at least get the creator's name up there, their pages up there, et cetera. Whew. All right. Let's get to these comments. And I'm just going to go through here. All right. I'm going to... I just bought that Anthony's Custom Animated Series Beast Head with the glasses and book. So Anthony's Customs, it, he it looked like he did produce a pretty nice looking beast. So if you're into that glass look, I think that's from the cartoon, right? It looks like it was from the cartoon. Looks like Jedi Nut picked that one up too. I would have featured it on this past week's, uh, but I didn't see it this week in Custom. I didn't, I, or else I would have featured it. Looks like Hot Cheeto Fingers also bought it. Okay, now I think I know where I'm at. All right. Yeah. Put the link on here for the other guys. And if it blocks the link, I'll, I'll I'll accept it. You can go to Anthony's page and buy it. What's up, Sean? So Sean has a question. What do you use to usually make your figures look weathered and dirty and stuff like that? Well, oftentimes it's just you can do a little bit of dry brushing, sometimes uh, a, a mixture of silvers and browns tamia tamia and a lot of the star wars folks will use it, it has has like a weathering kit and and it, and it comes with an applicator uh to do that but you, you just want to use colors you, you look at look at your own clothes when you're like like i have some some camo shorts on and these are brand new compared to some that I've had for a couple of years. The colors are faded. So you want to use lighter colors. And a lot of the times the way you do that is just by using uh, a little bit of dry brushing. And the dry brushing technique is very easy. I don't really like the effect of a dry brush, like, the, uh, like, a, like a technical dry brush where you put just a little bit of paint on the end of your brush. You wipe it down on a paper towel until practically all the paint, and then you just feather it over the figure. I don't really like that, uh, the look. And uh, if you go to some of my old live sessions when I did a Thanos, it was quite a while ago, I tried doing some some dry brushing, and I didn't end up liking it. It just it, it makes the figure for me, I think, the dry brushing technique. And I know I just said, oh, you could use dry brushing to weather your figure. Uh, but it, it makes it look... It doesn't make it look clean, and I don't really care for that. Some people can use it effectively, like an armor. You can use a little bit of that technique, but too much of it makes it look dirty. Dirty and uh, uh, not a good finish custom. But uh, go ahead and you, look up the techniques. The uh, Warhammer folks, the guys that use Citadel paints, and they do Warhammer gaming, the miniature paintings, they have a ton of of different brush techniques because a lot of it they won't use airbrush some of them do uh, and they actually have airbrushing techniques too but i've learned a lot just by watching those videos that are available on youtube and uh one of the recent things that i learned is edge highlighting uh, I, I read it on action figure toronto's he did a tutorial on the professor x chair and i actually use that uh, edge highlighting technique that comes from the warhammer gaming uh, uh painting folk and it really does make a humongous difference 
on the figure. So you can learn techniques like that. Look at dry brushing. They will have uh, a better explanation than what I just gave. And you'll, it will be a visual explanation and so that you can apply that weathering effect to your figures. Hopefully that helps you out. All right, you guys are talking about do dogs respond to what I said? Uh, thanks so much for your help, Brock. Anna Kim Morales. Oh, so I was just talking to Anna Kim Morales right there, uh, Beck C right there in the chat. And I was just talking uh, to him about doing some edge highlighting on he's working on an Aquaman figure on the scales. I think doing a little bit of edge highlighting on the scales would really brighten that figure up and uh, make it look more realistic. And that's the, the, the look that I really enjoy. Facebook. Hey, what's up, Fig Life Miami? Hey, Dude Dog, by the way, are you still selling these shirts? The figure game shirts? If you are. Yeah, Lee Allard uh, just mentioned that. Uh, Action Figure Toronto is a great resource to the custom figure community. He does have a ton. He puts all his work on there. And he does have uh, a lighting it's like a how to take pictures because he does take amazing pictures of his customs and he does have a tutorial how to do it. And it's not super complicated. His is, it, it is a little bit more complicated than I've ever done on my pictures. And I think you can just get away with a backdrop and two white lights and that would, you can get a good crisp picture on your figure. But if you want to take like action figure photography photographs, and it's just the, like almost like a product shot that your background, it's very, it's a simple colored background and it just highlights your custom figure. His tutorial is, is how you want to go about and it'd be pretty cheap to get the stuff, most of the stuff that he has on there. Jason Silla, what's up? So Jason mentions about videos with bad lighting. This video right here isn't terribly great lighting but it highlights enough of me talking to you especially coming from one side by the way guys those those of you that are doing uh new painting uh or new painters like right now you can see the lighting is coming from uh this side and there's shadowing here there's highlights here and there's shadowing underneath here that's what you that's what you got to shoot for in your figures to make it look more realistic uh, those are painting the cartoony type then maybe you won't need as much of uh, that highlighting but even when you're doing a repaint on the face if you can just you can just see i always try to picture the sun coming from above and then focus on that if you do cenethal priming and action figure toronto also has a tutorial on that and there's many tutorials on on um, on youtube on cenethal priming if you do that priming it'll show you where you can where you should be putting your highlights and your shadows. And as a new customizer, I didn't really think about that. But as I've gone on a couple of years of doing custom or a few years doing customs, I really try to focus that when I'm painting a face or a body. Um, and I think it's really helped my custom game get elevate. But you can just see a simple lighting here. Uh, you can just look at the, your own face when you're, when you're doing um, the painting. Dude Dog right there is uh, uh, the lighting that he uses. And I think this that's the lighting that T-Man also uses. Uh, you can buy it on Amazon. So Late Night says he loves Warhammer. Yeah, John Strand, he's talking about those contrast paints. And they essentially look like the, uh, the, uh, the, the washes that they have. They look really neat. I just haven't figured out what is exactly the difference. And I've watched a few videos using the paints and essentially it just tints. It tints the, the upper layer of the paint, kind of like the uh, Agrax Earth Shades, the Shades paintings that they have. Uh, Seraphin Sepia is another one that, they, uh, that I have that I've used on figures, on painting uh, the figures. Let me see. Hey, what's up, Chris? I'm I'm late on the on the comments as well.
least I am wearing the camel shirts. Look, I think these are the. Woohoo! I think these are the same ones. Hey, if you shop at Target, that's where I got. Them. I did not get a new camera. The difference is here is at my desk, and this is my my camera from from my desk computer. And then the other one, when I film the custom stuff, I'm just using my phone. And depending on on the the internet that night, it's going to broadcast in different qualities. Uh, this camera right here can actually do shoot 4K. Uh, when I do film my videos, I do film them in 4K and uh, the custom videos, and I upload it in 4K. Most of us don't have 4K technology yet. It's not the standard. 1080p is still the standard. But uh, some people, like uh, Symbiote Seeker, uh, a buddy of mine in Australia, he has a 4K TV, and he'll see the custom videos in 4K. Yeah, uh, it, you just got to uh, – I'm scared to attempt face repaints. You just got to do it, and sometimes you'll have to start over and wash your work. So when you uh, lay down a couple of the ba your, your when your base layer and you've done a lot of your work, what you could do is you can uh, put a, a high gloss finish or some sort of finish on that figure, let it dry, obviously let it cure. And then when you start doing your highlighting, if you if you screw up, you can go back and wash it off pretty easily without it taking the uh, the base layers off because you've put a protective coat over it. So a lot of these folks, and I'm wondering, uh, so we, uh, Lee Aller is still in, in the chat. He is, if you haven't seen his work, Leech Customs, master painter, uh, master customizer. But go look at his painting. Lee, when you lay down your base level, do you ever put a, a gloss finish or some sort of finish over it when you're, uh, when you're doing the other layers on top of it, the highlights and shadows or, or whatever? Or... Or are you at, at, a, at a point where you don't have to do that, uh, where you don't typically screw up on the painting that you do? Curious. So there you go. So Lee Aller, he says he does use semi, uh, semi-gloss semi top coat on Tamiya. So that's what he does. So he'll lay his base layers down. And then when he starts doing his highlights, et cetera, when he starts putting the fine uh, the, the finishes on his figure, he's got that, that protective semi-gloss. So if he does mess up, he can he can pretty much wash it off without without a, affecting his undercoat. So I cheat fingers. Did you ever finish your bullseye custom? So, JC, uh, bullseye is the old man bullseye is pretty much done. I just have to add the uh, electro weapons to him, and I haven't decided exactly how to do that. But he's essentially he's finished, and I, I'll put out a showcase video on the next probably in the next few weeks. Yeah, the miniature painters are are really good, and their and their teaching techniques. I think they've mastered it. They have the good angles, really good teachers. Uh, a lot of the top ones that I wish I could tell you. I just I, I recently saw a few. So Lee Aller he suggests outdoor natural light for a beginner. So when you start painting, if you want. Uh, to see really what your paint is is doing, uh, paint outside if you can. Uh, I struggle to paint outside, and I have tried it uh, myself because I live in such a warm climate uh, that my paints dry out quickly, and I haven't used the wet palette to paint yet. Those of you that have been customizing for a while, have you tried wet palette yet? I haven't done that uh, it looks like it, I should be doing it because my the acrylic paints dry out pretty quickly, but I haven't done it. Did the Wolverine guy leave? I hope I didn't offend you. I wasn't I wasn't saying anything uh, why your Wolverine uh, custom didn't make it. I really don't know why it made it. I was just uh, is he still in here or she still in here? It's most likely a he. The majority of the people that, that view my stuff are guys. Like a really high percentage of dudes. What's up, James? What's up, Seb Spider?
That's funny. Aiden, that's funny. Thank you, uh, Seb Spider. But I got some one scale water slide decals for eyes. Hmm. I've seen, I've seen, I've used some water decals when I was uh, doing some uh, Star Wars model kits last year. I didn't really care for it much. Eyes are very difficult to paint if you, especially if, you know, your eyesight is not the greatest. Some of you younger folk won't have a problem, but uh, us oldies do have a problem with that. We have to use magnifying glasses or something that magnifies, not magnifying glasses, something that magnifies the actual figure. And you have to have the right paintbrush. I found myself so frustrated painting. I, I know the technique that I need to use, but executing it was very difficult because I wasn't using the right paintbrush. The bristles in the paintbrush weren't fine enough to get in the eye. And uh, there's techniques for painting eyes on YouTube. I suggest that you try it and uh, get, but you have to find the right pointer brush, the right, especially because you're working at such a small scale, but you, it's, you can do it. Look at Mike De La Paz. That guy is a phenomenal painter. You look at his, the, the eyes that he does, top notch, top notch stuff. But I, I guarantee you he's doing it with the right equipment. And that's often a lot of the frustration, especially when you're a new customizer. I, I was frustrated by it. I just didn't have the right tools. I had bought myself like a cheap rotary tool from Harbor Freight, like $10. And I was working on hours and hours to get pieces. cut. It was just... It wasn't working until I finally got a Dremel that has some like power to it that it just made a world of difference. It cut my prep time a ton. So having the right tools is, is very important. Let's see, peace, Nightwalker. Did I see a uh, stigma custom says did you see the custom? Oh, Beast Head. No, I, I, I actually, yes, I have. I, I knew he was making it, but I don't think I've seen. I, I can't remember now. I may have seen it. Because, no, because if I would have seen it, I would have included it. The final product. Um, I haven't, but I, I heard some people in here have pre-ordered it already. Uh, just make sure. Okay, so Lee Eller says, just make sure to set the underpaint before your top coat might ruin the shading or highlights. Okay, so what he's saying there is, and this is a mistake that even someone who's been doing it for a few years now, my, like myself, still makes. You really have to let your paints dry. You have to, have to, have to let your paints dry before you move to your next, uh, your next uh, paint unless you're doing wet blending. And if you wanna see what wet blending does, I think if you go to Symbiote Seeker, I think I saw him in the chat, he was in here. He recently put out a video where he was doing some wet blending. Again, those are the miniature Warhammer guys. They have tons of videos on that technique. But if you're not wet blending, you really need to let your paints dry because if you put that top coat before the, uh, or the finish, the high gloss finish, the semi gloss finish, if you put that on before, it, it's going to screw up the paint. Sometimes it'll it'll cloud it up. And even when you're painting, you really need to let the paint. You have to be patient. You want to use a fan? I'm pointing over here, but you see there's a fan over here. You want to use a fan and dry your paint? Fine, cool. Uh, if you can't be, if you want to uh, speed up your work, you can use a fan. I don't know if Lee would recommend that or not, but you need to. It's very very basic step. And a lot of new customizers do not let their paints dry. And what they end up having is you can see it in a paint job where it's really just caked on and it doesn't look good. Another mistake that new customizers, since we got on the topic here and there's 40 of you still in the chat, a lot of new customizers, what they'll do is they'll, they'll glob on their putty. You know, they're, 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 they're new to sculpting and a mistake I made always use more. I use more than you actually need. So less is more in painting and in sculpting. And then once that sculpting, whatever you've sculpted is set, you want to sand it out. You sand it, sand it, sand it, sand it until it's smooth. That's why you look, and I'll use Lee 
as an example, since he's in the chat, I don't think some of these other guys that were. So Lee's the perfect example. Look at his customs. Blow up his pictures. Look at them up close of the stuff that he sculpted, and it's going to be smooth. Very, very smooth. You look at some other customizers. You, you look at their putty. You don't even have to uh, blow it up. You see it's still rough because they haven't put in the elbow grease. A lot of the custom work that is not fun to do is the one that's very tedious and sanding. It's like prepping the joints. Nobody, a new customizer won't prep their joints by, by uh, you know, dremeling or sanding the joints. But all that work that you put in ahead of time, you know, you want to get to the fun pine of, uh, part of painting. A lot of it's going to, your, your paint is going to look good when you've put in that effort. One of my favorite customs that I've done is the Thanos. And I, you can go back and look at the video. But if you look at the chest, the piece that I removed, I removed part of the piece from the Marvel Select. But there was a, because the figure was bigger, I used the, uh, the uh, Juggernaut build the figure. I had to sculpt in his chest and I sanded it. But if you look at the chest, you can see where I wasn't, I didn't do an, a good enough job. And I can look at my custom now. And some of you guys may look at my custom, oh, that looks awesome. And I got a lot of compliments from it. But I can look at that custom and say, man, I should have put in more time during that phase of customizing because if I would have done so, my end product would have been even better than. The, what I achieved. And it was actually a decent paint job for my skill level. I was really happy with the paint job, but I can see it on my sculpting. It wasn't very good. Whereas if you look at Lee's stuff, pull up any of his stuff and you'll see it's very smooth, very complete. It looks like it was manufactured, right? And that's essentially what that guy uh, does. Whew. Your breath. Yeah, so Jedi Nut has obviously used the uh, wet palette. Fig Life, what are you laughing at? Can't probably something I said. Bargainman says he hates doing the eyes. I put the female percent because I always. Oh, <laughs> you know what? Uh, probably true. Let me. I'll tell you my analytics right now. And and remind. My wife is watching my stuff. So that's that it takes part, and sometimes my daughters will go in there. Sometimes. <laughs> so my analytics right now. Let me see. Where is it? Audience. Ninety-five point nine percent of my viewership is males. The rest are females. So four percent of, and then part of that is my wife that's supportive of of me. Uh, I put out these statistics recently on my my Instagram. 28% of you are 18 to 24. 25 to 34 consists of almost 30%. 35 to 44, which is the category I'm in, 26.7%. 45 to 54, 10%. And that's about it. United States, 61%. United Kingdom, 5%, Mexico, 4.3%, Canada, 34 Philippines, 22 I got some Filipinos watching me, and those guys, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's in their water, but they're like naturally gifted artists. So many phenomenal Filipino artists. Just, mabute, mabute, mabute lolopo if you're older. Figma says he's 41. My eyes are still okay. I use a Figma Micron pen for dotting the iris. Figma Micron pen. I have to remember that. Figma Micron pen. So Symbiote Seeker says he made this mistake with Caliban the first time around. Uh, not sure what he was referring to. Probably something I said. Jedi says he likes the Citadel brushes. Those can be expensive, though. How long should you wait for paint to dry? When you when you think it's dry, wait a 
wait another 15 minutes. Justin says modeling paint tends to have a very quick dry time. That's very, very true, especially, you know, your Vallejo paints, Citadel paints. I'm trying to think of some of the Tamiya paints. I haven't used too many Tamiyas. I do like the, the clear Tamiya paints, uh, I, but I feel they're, they're not necessarily acrylic. If those of you that use Tamiya paints, let the people know. Uh, they smell different too. They smell like candy. They smell so good. It does depend on the on the climate. <laughs> too kind. Best channel in the world. Ah, there's a lot of people who disagree with you. <laughs> All right, let me see what, what else we got here. I don't, I personally uh, don't like testers. I haven't used too many of them, but I don't know if they're a pure acrylic paint. But I don't know enough about them to know. I just don't, I've used some of them and I, I, I haven't liked the result or the use that I've had with Vallejo and Citadel are my favorite. Tamiya. I haven't used enough Tamiya except for the clear. I love their clear. Oh, here we go. Let me show this. Jason just put up a link. Brock, what's a good silver paint for dry brushing? Look up. There's so many of them. And they're different tones of silver. I think that's the right terminology for it. Some are brighter. Some are deeper in color. Uh I can't just recommend one. I don't even know. There's a bazillion names for them. Vallejo has different, uh, like a number system for them. And then Citadel has names for them. So uh, it depends what you want. So if you go into your hobby shop, uh, there's a hobby shop that I visit. And those guys do a lot of like the army painting and car painting. Uh, they do a lot of model kit painting. And they have a great eye for paint. So sometimes I'll go, hey, uh, I'll show them, um, I'll show them a color that I want. Hey, I'm trying to achieve this color right here. What paint do you recommend? And they'll be able to yeah, try this. And show sure enough, it's right on the money for what I wanted to accomplish. So I have that benefit for me. Otherwise, you're just gonna go, gonna have to go by experience. If you don't have a hobby shop, you can go to Amazon. And uh, and eBay, they have they have stuff on their paints. What's up, Ricky? You shouldn't be sniffing paints. Well, when I was airbrushing the other day, and I just couldn't help the smell. Then my throat hurt afterwards. That's probably a bad sign. Uh, thanks, Jason. Uh, so I'll I'll uh, I'll take a look at that link when, once I'm done here. How long have I been streaming for? Almost an hour. Let me open this one package. This is from Gabriel Roman. Que pasó, chico? I don't know exactly what he sent me here. Let me sure I don't cut myself. What's the best way to open this box? Definitely don't want to cut myself on camera. All right. Vamos a ver lo que me mandaste, chico. Cool. Uh, I got a Space Venom arm and a Titus leg. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Space Venom. I had him. I think Nightwalker sent him to me. I think we did some sort of trade, but Nightwalker smokes like a chimney. 
and had a smoke smell. Couldn't deal with it. But anyways, uh, I am building Titus again because uh, I don't know why, but I feel like I want to repaint Titus. Give him some different shades of blue, different shades of gold. See if I can bring out his face. Thank you for the part, sir. And then the last thing I'm going to open, by the way, let me see. I think, has somebody already claimed this uh, World War II Captain America, or Captain America? I think Ace said he wanted it. You can huff acrylic. Yeah, I, I don't. I didn't think it was that damaging. That damaging. You never know. 20 years from now, if I'm still alive, I'll have some lung issues because. Uh oh. I've, I'm sorry. I've missed a ton of comments. Yeah, check it out. But yeah, Citadel. So A says that most of his early stuff was testers. They dry like a rubber or plastic finish. My silver from them was my go-to. Still use some of them for mixing. So he still uses testers, so he likes them. Ace does really, really good stuff. And I get to see all his – I'm, I'm buddies with him, so I get to see all his behind the scene. He does really fantastic stuff. He just doesn't finish. That's what she said. Finish, player. We want to see your finished products. There you go. Hobby Lobby. You can find stuff on Hobby Lobby, and they have coupons that you can take advantage of. Let me see. Yeah, got it. Jedi Nut says that. Oh, I see. Uncle Dynamite? I don't know who that is, Ricky. Hi, Amy. Hey, here we go. She's one part of my 4%. 4% female viewership. Uncle Dynamite is cool. I haven't seen that. I don't know who that is. Is that a giant fan or a chair in the corner? That right there? Or right here? This is a fan. It's not giant. And that is a chair. That was a swap meet fine for 20 bucks a few years ago. Can't beat that chair for 20 bucks. Okay, let me see. Testers and model masters are the same. Make it a. I'm trying to build my collection. Any tips where to find bodies and cheaper figs to build up? Go to the groups on Facebook. Go to the groups on Facebook. And you just look at Marvel Legends if that's the type of figures that you're going for. And there's always people getting rid of figures and trading figures. And that's where I try to get my figures from. Sometimes on eBay, you can find good deals. Also, Mercari will have uh, good deals now and again. And I think that's all I got for tonight, guys. Uh, I said I was going to open this. But uh, do you guys, you guys don't need to see this open. So I think I'm done. Any last questions before I sign off? 47 people uh, up in here right now. So you may have some pictures. And we're going to be going to church in a little bit. So I do have to get ready. Going to church tonight so I can have Sunday open for just maybe some custom work. You guys are talking about some sort of uh, Spider-Man. Oh, yeah, don't don't go to the dark web. You get your identity, your identity stolen. You don't have a good uh, VPN. Oh, let me. So Lago says, what do you do with a hole on a head sculpt from the neck peg to fit snug? Do you just make a larger hole and add tack? A bazillion different ways. I have actually a video. Go to Customizing 101 on my playlist, and that I'll show you. I, I show a video on how you can do it. You can use hot glue. You can use some putty. You can use some tack. You can use a bazillion different things. But one of the things that you do want to get if you're going to do custom figures or if you just want to be able to custom fit heads, if you're just going to do heads, go to Harbor Freight and buy yourself a rotary tool for 10 bucks. 
or buy yourself a little bit more of an expensive tool if you think you're going to be doing customs then you can and then you'll probably want a hot glue gun you don't have to get a high temperature gun just get the regular low temp one and that that's an easy way to fit the head but go to go check a take a look at that video I don't know what that means, George. What's up, George? You're welcome, Dan. Glad to do it. I, I enjoy doing it. As long as I enjoy doing the, all the custom stuff and sharing it this week, I, I'm going to keep doing it as long as it's it's a hobby, guys. For me, it's a hobby. Some of you make uh, make a, a little bit of a living on that. So free advertising for you. Get on it, man. Peace out, Justin. I'm going to get through these last questions and I'll be off myself. And fees, nest bounty hunters given to me for 11 bucks, but they are fantastic. Oh, that's a good price for a custom figure. It's a steal. Oh, so you guys are probably talking about Spider-Man. Yeah. Pounds nine, seven, eight. He's uh, he focuses on, on spider man customs. Lee Aller Leech Customs. I don't know what I should call you. You go by, you have so many names on there. But he recently did a Spider Man that was uh, also the webbing on it is just amazing. It takes a very, very trained hand to do those. Thanks, Lago. All right, guys. You got it. Oh yeah, no, you're war uh, you're welcome, Corwin. I'm glad. So for those of you that are still here, check out uh, Tech Chucker's Brain Blast. I think he goes by Tech Chucker now. If you're into the custom dios, a lot of people ask me to include custom dios, but I've never made one, so I couldn't speak intelligently on it. Well, he's a dial maker, and he started a, a program very similar to This Week in Customs. He's calling it This Week in Dioramas. Head on over to his channel and check it out. He just put out his first episode yesterday. All right, guys. Catch you on the next one. Peace.